and see how long it took before everybody was quiet to see how that worked out. But instead, I'll start talking because that's something that I'm good at. So my name is Chrissy, and I am the Chief Human Resource Officer here at Oak Knoll. I want to take a moment just to thank you to come or for coming to celebrate Kim uh, Bergen Jackson and her time here at Oak Knoll. So the agenda for today, you can't hear, is this better? Beautiful, thank you. So the agenda for today, we will have a handful of speakers that will be inviting up to the stage, uh, followed by a short video, and of course Kim will get up and say a few words. So with that being said, the first person that I'm going to invite up is Dr. Butler. Uh, he is our medical director and has been for about seven years. So if you would like to welcome him up, he is on his way. First, take a moment and say thank you to the Oak Knoll community. I think this may be the first time uh, that I've been able to be up in front of uh, all of you, and you've been so uh, kind to me and my family and uh, when welcoming to us. You might recognize me with the four kids at the, at the picnic. So, uh, thank you uh, for, for being so gracious. Today, we gather to celebrate Kim for the deep and genuine impact she's had on all of us. When I think about Kim, what stands out the most is the way she's embodied a true sense of caring, what I'll refer to as love. Not just in some kind of romantic or, you know, kind of box of chocolate way, but in the way that love really is willing the good for another. The kind of love that permeates through everything that I've seen Kim do here. We've seen it in the way she navigated us through the COVID uh, pandemic and the hardest days there, always with the good of our residents in mind. She never wavered, even in the most difficult moments. We've seen it how she fosters a culture of autonomy and, accountabil and, and accountability with her staff and other leaders alike, empowering us to be our best selves to serve all of you. And I know many of you have experienced firsthand the way Kim sets aside her own tasks her own plans to lend a hand in the moment, whether that's helping a resident with their tray in the dining room or pausing to offer support to someone in need. That's the kind of leader that leaves a lasting mark and that's the kind of leadership that we've been privileged to experience. So while it's easy to feel sadness as Kim, as Kim passes, uh, uh, prepares to leave Oak Knoll, <laughs> Kim is going on to teach the next generation of nurses, and what a gift that is. She'll be passing on this extraordinary ability to find joy and fulfillment in the act of giving oneself to the good of others. And through her teaching, this ripple effect of that love, of that care, will reach even further, touching countless more lives. Kim, I'm thankful for having worked with you, and know that you leave both no stronger and better than when you got here. Thank you. are impressive and I think a lot of you know what those are. Way too many for me to list today. Uh, but first and foremost, Kim has always prioritized what is best for the residents and expected that same focus from all of her staff. We all know that Kim loves a party and a good prank, but she's great at some of the hard stuff too, like finding the root of a problem and having difficult conversations. 
That's the not fun stuff. Um, personally, I've been grateful to have Kim by my side through the mostly good experiences, but some bad and hard ones over the last 13 plus years. The first couple of years of COVID took a huge toll on all of us, but I'm not sure either Kim or I would have survived it without the other to lean on. Uh, Kim has brought a vision and energy to Oklahoma that inspired us all. She's always valued input from perspectives of all staff and considered that when making decisions. She fostered a collaborative approach to problem solving and decision making that encouraged teamwork, respect, and ownership, which leads to the best quality of care for our residents. And we will continue on with that culture that she firmly built. Kim has always been a cheerleader for our staff to dream big and go for their goals and has been responsible for many of us returning to the classroom to further our education, myself included. Uh, some might say she's pushy about it, but it worked. <laughs> Kim has definitely left her mark on Oak Knoll and on the field of aging services at the state level as well as nationally. We know she'll continue to be an advocate for aging services and that we will still be seeing her around as she moves on to mold and guide amazing new nurses.
Ken, I'm excited for the next chapter in your life and the impact you will make. Am I sad that you will no longer be a walk down the hall to visit? No. <laughs> Why is that? It's because we are not just co-workers, we are family. And we will always be a part of each other's lives, even if we are not in the same building. Good luck, Kim. Association that represents not-for-profit providers of aging services. And so, thinking back on your own careers, you were likely involved in an association of some sort. And I think of the Iowa Bar Association or the Iowa Bankers Association. There are lots of them. And Oak Knoll is one of our proud members. It's my pleasure today to recognize Kim, um, who has not only been a big part of your lives at Oak Knoll, but a huge part of our association. And I'd like to recognize her for those contributions that she's made to the overall long-term care profession in Iowa and across the country, um, as she's been involved both in our state association and our national association. Kim joined our board in 2019 and was a firecracker right from the beginning. <laughs> Shortly after, um, she was invited to join the board um, as part of our executive committee, and she became chair-elect in the middle of 2020. So, as you can imagine, when other people um, were obviously very busy, Kim was not afraid to take on more leadership opportunities. Um, and she has served as our board chair um, from 2022 until just last month. I don't need to remind anyone of the challenges that we face through the pandemic, but I do want to recognize Kim for her efforts to keep residents safe, not only here at Oak Knoll, but across the state and the nation due to her involvement with peers through leading age. Kim has a tremendous amount of expertise that she readily shared with her peers and our members. She helped influence policy and procedures across the state as we were all dealing with a novel situation and looking for a pathway forward. She's become one of the most trusted and influential voices in the state for our field, known to always advocate for what's best for older adults' quality of life and the delivery of high quality care and services. In fact, um, the, the leader of the state agency um, who, who regulates long-term care communities uh, last month in referencing Kim called, uh, called her not just one of the smartest people he knows, but a friend. Um, and I think that just is really in, an incredible representation of um, her reputation um, and expertise. Kim has also mentored future leaders of our field um, as she served as a coach in our statewide leadership academy. And I could go on and on and on. Like you, I'm saddened to see her leave Oak Knoll, but I'm so excited for her next chapter at the university. We need to attract and train the next generation of professionals in our field, and there isn't anyone I would trust more to do so than Kim. So Kim, on behalf of Leading Age Iowa and our board of directors, I want to thank you for your amazing contributions to the association and for your service as our board chair the past two years. You've helped us successfully navigate us through unprecedented times and have been a ray of light for members in the most challenging moments.
afternoon. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO at Oak Knoll. And for those of you who are curious what it said, it says, uh, Kimberly Jackson, Chair, Board of Directors for Leading Age Iowa 2022 through 2024. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yesterday afternoon, I finally sat down to write what I was going to say today. Uh, for those of you who, uh, who know me, I am an excellent procrastinator. And thinking about this moment uh, was something that I pushed off for a really long time. There are so many emotions and memories. Laughing uncontrollably as Kim and I did a crossword puzzle on our flight to Los Angeles many, many years ago. Uh, one of our board members, Vern Nelson, was about 10 rows behind us in the plane, and he said that he could hear us laughing from, from 10 rows away. Our pride in opening the loft in 2018. The shared frustration of coming into work on a Sunday morning this past August because state surveyors had just arrived in our building for our annual survey only four months after they had left our, our building from our last annual survey. And the tears that sometimes came as we shared our personal stories during CREATE trainings. I will cherish those memories forever. You have made such a difference in the lives of countless staff members and residents. There are people who are nurses today because you saw the potential in them. You provided encouragement and support, or as Sarah said, the push that they needed to register for that first class. There are residents whose lives were enriched because you had a dream and made it happen. I remember Goosty Coleman ziplining at Camp Courageous at the age of 106 <laughs> and representing Oak Knoll as the torchbearer at our last Silver Games event. There are so many examples of how you shared your passion for serving older adults and making a difference in their lives. In your new role at the College of Nursing, you will get to light the torch for the next generation of nurses. You will make caring for older adults sexy. <laughs> at least for some of your students. You will continue to influence the care that is provided in nursing homes, and hopefully you will be able to leverage the relationships you've built through your years at Oak Knoll to have an even bigger impact across our state and across our nation. Thank you for the past 15 years of service to the Oak Knoll community. You've had a hard job, and you've done it well. I love you, and I want all the best for you. And I will miss working with you. Thank you. because we came together 
and we fought that monster and we won. It was not a one person fight. It was a, a whole community fight. So Oakville had been a community before COVID, but we certainly showed what was possible in healthcare if we all came together. And I suggested crazy things when COVID started, shutting dining rooms and eliminating visitation and nobody told me they thought I was crazy to my face. <laughs> We did everything together and there was no pushback and we did not lose one person to COVID. <laughs> there will be nothing else I will ever do to top that in my career. So if I've worked with you, I'm so proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're my students, because I have students in the back, embarrassing. <laughs> you better work with older adults because they're amazing, life-changing people. And um, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting me grow up here and become grown up and go teach nursing students. And I didn't know you guys were coming, so thank you. Shannon, leading age has been just amazing for me. So that's it. We're going to watch a video now. Thank you. I love you.
Well, good afternoon, Oak Knoll. Here we are on June 24th, 2020. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, it's Wednesday, uh, December 9th, our two weeks, no positive cases of COVID-19. And so we don't have to test the residents. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to April 7th. When hey, everybody, here we are, Wednesday, August I've spent the last 35 years in nursing and care of older adults. I'm positioned uniquely between research, practice, and education. My contributions have contributed to improved quality of life for older adults and the staff who care for them.
Lincoln wanted me to mention that she decided not to cut her hair during COVID. Uh, so that's why it was really long in some of those videos. I actually rather liked it. Uh, I thought it was very nice. So uh, thank you all again for coming. I This has been such a bittersweet day. Uh, and I won't go on. I, I thought about writing a speech, but I don't think that I could make it through it. So um, I'm just going to say thank you for 20 years. I've known Kim for most of my life, I'm going to say. Uh, no, for the last 20 years, um, she's just been an instrumental part in um, me becoming who I am. So I just really appreciate you and all of you for coming to help celebrate her. While it's very sad uh, to see you go, I'm super pumped for what the future is going to bring and for the nurses that come pouring in here saying, guess who my instructor was? And we can, we can hear about you that way. So uh, when you leave this room, uh, there will be cake and refreshments right outside. There's seating. Uh, of course, you're welcome to stay in here. You can um, sit over uh, to the left hand, or excuse me, my right hand side. And then there's also seating um, just down at the end of the hallway. If you haven't had a chance to sign the card yet that is at the door, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to send it home with Kim quite yet. Um, so you can stop by the administrative offices and sign it there if you'd like. So with that being said, again, thank you, and let's give Kim one more round of applause.